The third studio album from the Northern Irish musician singer songwriter Foy Vance comes one year after leaving his previous record company, Glass Night Records, to sign with Ed Sheeran's label. Considering the first person to do this was Jamie Lawson, whose debut album went to number one despite it being severely underwhelming, maybe this was an opportunity for Ed to win back some points and maybe Vance was the person to do so. Well, Sheeran can rest easy because not only did this happen, but The Wild Swan by Foy Vance is hands down one of the best albums I've heard all this year and is a serious contender for a top 10 spot on the year-end list. The combination of solid songwriting that's overloaded with a sense of earnestness gives off a vibe that's both heartwarming and humble, vocal deliveries that are impassioned and are not half-assed in any part of the album, and the instrumentation which blends genres of folk, rock, jazz, country and Irish music that's full of emotion, personality, contains solid melodies and rhythms that it really is tough to pick out any duff moments on this album. There's a definite warm glow this album emits and it begins straight out of the gate with Noam Chomsky as a soft revolution, playing off a humorous vibe where the verse lists names of those who provide a ruckus, riotous or upbeat time and suggests to the listener to go for those people if you so desire. If not, there's always Noam Chomsky. Upbeat Feel Good, which is a chilled, relaxing track, conjures the imagery of burning the midnight wood on a beach whilst experiencing the moment with someone special. It's warm, inviting and full of charm. Bangatow sees Foy hailing his hometown, sailing the rough waters to return to his home, the place that's forever in his heart and the place where he will make sure to return to no matter where he is in the world, making sure that when he gets back to enjoy a few drinks and embrace merriment with his friends and wife. And the track Coco, which reads as a father's dedication song to his daughter, could have come off as cheesy and sickly, but Foy shows that he's a skilled enough writer to make sure that that doesn't happen. I also love the brothers and sisters in arms vibe that's conjured up on the track Ziggy Looked Me In The Eye, whether this is a reference to the late David Bowie, I'm not entirely sure. A rallying cry of revolution that comes across as sincere. A revolution for what? I don't know, but who cares? A similar theme is found on Fire It Up, The Silver Spear, a call to keep the fire in everyone alive and rise up out of lingering doubt. The song Be Like You Belong seems to be about reflecting on the idea of getting old and Foy reflecting on things that he's been through and reminiscing on possible regrets, but encourages himself to live in the present. A simple sentiment, but it's presented with a raw earnestness. And the final track, The Wild Swans on the Lake, caps off the album beautifully, conjuring a serene wedding in the wilderness using some stark yet gorgeous images in the meantime. Instrumentally, the album is pretty sound across the board and there's very few moments where the instrumentation falters. Tracks like Burden, Unlike Any Other, Ziggy and Coco are rooted solidly in the folk genre, but there are some tracks where it's the little things that make the song special. Noam Chomsky with its soft rock delivery and inclusion of horns that just simmer in the background before the fuzzy saxophone takes us out. Upbeat feel good, blending elements of jazz and country and the inclusion of a chord is divine. The accordion appears again on the piano-led banger town which just smoulders. The bass line that gives She Burns a nice little bounce in the middle. Fire It Up is packed to capacity with layers of sound. The bright acoustic guitar, the military drums, an Irish violin instrumental at the very end and the string only instrumentation on the final track is simply gorgeous. In conclusion, from what originally was catching a Foy Vance song on the radio quite by accident, turned into one of the most pleasant and enjoyable album listening experiences this year. Yes, the instrumentation isn't bombastic, in your face, highly technical, and yes, the songwriting may not be anything that's entirely groundbreaking, but what brings everything together so beautifully is the sheer earnestness in Boy's vocal delivery, the emotional resonance that drips from the lyrics, and the understated instrumentation where it's so blatant that real care and consideration went into pretty much every moment. I will say that some songs do resonate stronger than others, and that's primarily why certain songs stick with me more more than others. Probably the main reason why I'd say Casanova out of all of the songs on this album resonates with me the least. But all I can say is this, it's a great album and one that I strongly recommend. Overall, I score this album an 86 out of 100.